Hey guys, Alicia here and welcome to this week's video. It's another one of those weeks where I'm going to say that I'm super excited about this because I am. And this week I am painting, big surprise, and a big part of the reason why I'm so much looking forward to sharing this one with you is because I'm finally doing one of those things that I'm always saying, I really wish I could do this, or sit down and do this, or take the time to do this, or go back and explore this or that, and I've, I'm always saying things like that, and I know I'm not the only one who, you know, falls into that sort of thing, but I'm finally um, doing that, and it's exploring concepts and just kind of getting back into the idea of exploring original concepts, really, and painting paintings that um, I don't know, mean a little bit more to me. It seems so standard to think about. It's like, of course, that's what you do. You paint things that mean something to you, right? That's what being a painter means. But for me, I had very easily fallen into doing lots and lots of portrait studies, which is great. And um, there's a lot of learning and development and expression that can happen in doing portrait studies, but it started to feel more like interpreting a reference image which is great and wonderful but i was i was it was so heavily focused on that as opposed to exploring original concepts and if you know what i mean you'll know that the painting process feels so different when you're looking at a reference image and looking at a sketch or a painting you're working on and you're just trying to interpret the reference in a unique way or in a way that is individual to you that process is so different than coming up with a concept or having a concept in your mind and going what does this look like as a painting what does it feel like what am i trying to say and it, you're just asking totally different questions, or at least that's how I always feel, as though the questions I'm asking while I'm painting are just totally different. And I think both of those two mindsets to be in while painting are really important, and it's, it's good to have a variety, but it's been a while for me since I've been in this particular mindset. I remember a time specifically in maybe March of last year, so like a year and a half ago, where I was doing a lot of exploration like this and was asking myself these sorts of questions where I had a concept, maybe a small thumbnail sketch like the one you saw in the beginning of this video and going, what would this look like as a painting? And, and, and what am I trying to communicate here? How does it make me feel? Or what, what is this, what is the emotional tether or the mental tether um, of this concept? And then exploring that. Usually it's a very vague and not super specific idea. Um, and it's some sort of emotional tie that I even can't verbalize properly. So I just paint it. And that's, you know, the purpose of the painting is to express something that I don't know how to verbalize. And um, but it's, I feel like it's been so long since I've done this and there's not really a good reason. I mean, like what, I don't know. It's, 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 it's so simple for me. I, I don't know. I feel like there's maybe five or 10 minutes of prep time or thinking time or planning time that I just haven't given myself for the past year and a half. And the result is that I haven't created pieces like this for a while. And it just feels so nice to come back to this. I'm hoping to do a lot more. I feel like I am able to voice my individual painting style more when I work in this way. And it's just very refreshing. So let's talk about the actual piece, I guess, for a little bit. I'm falling back on my favorite sets of art supplies, which is my White Knights watercolors and this Canson hot pressed 100% cotton watercolor paper. I'll leave links to as many of the materials as I can in the description. Some of the brushes are a little difficult for me to link to because, for example, the one I'm using right now, I got in a stationary subscription box and I don't actually remember what brand name it is, but I'm mostly using my calligraphy brushes for this piece and the piece is pretty large. You may have noticed at the beginning that I was standing to start this one. The paper is 12 inches by 18 inches, 
which is kind of the top end for me as far as the size of pieces, but it's also a size that I really, really love working in. I love pieces that are big enough to allow for gestural, um, really loose brush, brush strokes, and it just feels really nice. This is kind of my favorite size to work at, maybe a little bit smaller because this size is very difficult to scan in my scanner when I want to make prints, which there will be, by the way. The original will be for sale in my shop and there will be prints available of this one as well. But it's difficult to scan because it's just large enough that I have to scan it in four parts. So sometimes when I do like a nine by 12 painting, I can scan it in two parts. So I scan the top half and then I scan the bottom and then I just kind of take some time to shift and nudge the two halves together so that they match up. But for a painting this size, I have to do it in four parts and it's very difficult to get four scans to line up perfectly, especially if there's any bit of skewing or warping or color variation, depending on how the scan is read. It's just way trickier to put together four pieces than it is two. It's kind of been enough to deter me from making paintings this large um, in the past, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to let that stop me anymore. I've already scanned this one in and put all of the pieces together for my patrons because this piece is the high resolution digital download for the month of October. So if you sign up over on Patreon at the $5 tier or higher, you can get access to this digital download as well as all of the other digital downloads I've done for Patreon in the past. I like that the digital rewards and the individual posts are something on Patreon that you can get even if you sign up later so that, like you can get the backlog of those as opposed to physical rewards you know where you have to kind of sign up in advance for those but anyway I have already scanned this one and put all of that together and it wasn't as bad as it was in my head and I think that's a big part of the entire process for me was I had the idea that or I had this mindset that putting together original concepts like this was such a task it was it was such a um, a huge obstacle and it is a bit more work than just you know finding some reference images I like and doing portrait studies um, but it's so worth it and really it's not that much more work it's it's just a bit more time so I was getting to the point where I was doing portrait studies in a half an hour or so to an hour and all of my footage for the painting of this piece came together to be about an hour and a half so yeah it did take more time to do um but really it wasn't as much time as what i was making it out to be in my head it definitely wasn't worth a year and a half of not doing things like this you know like it wasn't that much of a difference so it's kind of crazy the mental hurdles we we put in line or the things we tell ourselves we can't do and for the most part, the only thing stopping us is our own brains, because it's not really that much to overcome. And sure, it's tricky, and that doesn't mean it's going to work out perfectly every time. There are things about this piece that are not perfect. But what was really stopping me more than anything was my own brain, which is a silly thing to allow that to just block out wanting to do this for so long. I mean, if you think about if you think about it, a year and a half is like half of the time that I've been doing this, that I've been doing art on YouTube. And for me to just not have been doing the kinds of things, it's not that I haven't been doing what I want to do, because in the past couple of years, we've gotten to explore so much together. We've gotten to talk about how I use reference images and making paints and exploring so many different things. So I'm grateful for that time as well and I think the key for me is just variety like being able to mix things up and fall back on things and not be afraid to jump into things that are different and I can't keep putting off those things where I say I really want to get back into this and then I just don't do it so hopefully the other things that I say I want to get back into don't take a year and a half you know, like I don't just sit on those ideas and go, oh, I, I still haven't done that thing and time just keeps passing because then what am I doing in that time? Because it's still happening and I'm just not doing things. So anyway, hopefully um, this can be a learning experience in so many ways and I can continue to dive into stuff and things. Maybe for you guys, this doesn't seem that different from what I usually do. 
But for me, like I said, the process of making this felt so different and I was answering different questions and having a different sort of journey or adventure and it was so worth it to me to actually do that. Ah, it just feels nice. It feels very, very nice. So, if you're interested in prints of this piece, you can find those over on my website, as well as the original painting. I have to buy special large flat mailers for paintings of this size and I'm excited to um, to do that. You can find the high resolution digital download as well as a gif that I made of the process. I was taking pictures along the way and I made a gif for my patrons that shows each stage in the process kind of all divvied up. As usual, a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon and my members here on YouTube. I'm so grateful to you guys for the support that you provide. You can find links to those things in the description if you would like to support this channel further. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, so refreshing and nice feeling. Okay, I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>